So, hello everyone. Welcome to a happy little lecture in which I had originally planned to go over Go Baduk's tournament games, but, you know, he's feeling a little bit self-conscious, so we're not going to do that. Instead, I guess we're going to go over a Ghoulie and East Side Old game. I mean, it's probably not as good, but it should, it'll work. It'll work. I have confidence that this, this will be a good substitute and you guys won't be upset. So this should be fine. So in case anyone absolutely has been living under a rock or is brand new to go, in which case if you are, welcome. I will put the ranks of these two players. And congratulations, welcome to KGS. But yes, recently we had a game between Guli and Yisrael, and if you for some reason don't know who these two players are, I will humor you and tell you that Yisrael is was um, essentially the top player in Korea very long time. He's retiring soon. Quite sad, quite sad. Guli, on the other hand, one of the top players in China, to my knowledge, not retiring soon. So, happy days. Uh, this was played, what? Sunday, I think. Yeah. Very recent game. Very recent game. As part of I don't know what. But for anyone thinking that Lee Sedol is retiring because, you know, he must be losing strength and is a weaker player now or something, well, this game is going to be a very, very interesting eye-opener for you. So, as usual, as per every lecture I ever have, we open up normally, Lee Sedol takes a corner, Guli takes the opposing corner, so we're not going to have a cross for Seki this time. We open up with a potential Chinese, though I don't believe it's going to be Chinese because that's a little bit out of fashion. Usually when we do Chinese, we do micro Chinese Fusekis. Haven't really seen um, low. Okay, that's not that's not true at all, is it? I have seen low recently. I just lied to all of you. I'm sorry. Yeah, low is kind of in fashion, I suppose. But needless to say, we don't have that. I'm sorry for betraying your trust, FC. You'll have to forgive me. Instead, we see approach on the cornerstone. Guli backs off, allowing Black to play something potentially that we don't. That, that okay? Now I know I'm telling the truth. Something we don't see very often. The Kobayashi has that option available, but we're still not going to see it. Instead, we're going to play off star point for a very, very unusual opening, but still one that you have to be weary of. I mean, with this, it's pretty easy to develop between these two stones if you are approaching it uh, incautiously. Same thing here, only here we have invasion point, very very obvious. If we approach normally and you know not high or not low or whatever, we can still uh, do that, develop really really quickly. Well I meant the traditional Kobayashi there, Yannick. Uh, is it is R6 bad here? Um, if you play R6, you are inviting the shoulder hit. And that could be an issue, because let's go over, a, I don't know, just some random typical variation. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. Some random typical variation here. Um, something like this, right? Now, if black plays another move anywhere in here, it's usually not a problem because when these stones are played in the traditional variation, there's are still invasion points left behind. So I don't want to call it bad, but it's easier to develop territory, I think. We see white play the high approach instead, quite possibly thinking the same thing that you just did. Now black could still try and develop that. We could see a shoulder hit on the outside, heavily unusual, but it's a playable move. Could in fact do that. He said on the other hand, takes himself some territory. If white responds, fifth line territory for black. Pretty good deal. Instead, white backs away. Black follows up. 
not going to respond, of course, going to simply settle for a very, very typical variation. Usually, when we play this move, we know that black has an option to do this, and we're never going to respond to it, because this is simply too slow. I mean, black will be happy to play fifth line forever, because what we're trying to get here is white, an extension that can be attacked still, and pressured, things like that. That's not a problem, and it's not very fast development. Black does not care about anything that white's doing, so we usually play a quite a bit faster when we try to do this. Which is why we see this, and the ignore into the approach. This way, haven't given black fifth line territory, and lo and behold, we still have all of these cool points available to us later on for invasion. So that's all pretty straightforward, easy to follow along with. Game not really getting all that interesting so far. All, most of this is just standard. This kind of variation is very common nowadays. Um, not sure if I completely follow you. If you approach the 3-4, well, that depends on what your opponent's playing. Uh, yeah, that, that depends on what your opponent's playing. Kobayashi aside, if you did approach the 3-4 stone, it, it really depends on what your opponent responds with. I mean, if we do this, then sure. If that's the variation you're thinking of, that's very common. Um, if we're tightly pincered or something, we don't always see the other corner approach, because this is a pretty severe move against our stone. Uh, with most, most uh, pincers in general. So alright, we see this. Pretty uneventful game so far, until white says I'm attacking you. Now things can get interesting. Because if you do not know, Huguli and Ysidolar, for example, then you might not be aware that they are both very, very aggressive players. And if you are unaware of that, then the next moves for, let's say, the rest of the game might take you by surprise, because they're going to be slightly aggressive. The question is, how do we handle this? What are our options for dealing with this approach? Or, yeah, invasion, rather. We can kick. That we can do. That we can do. Uh, where, my, where are all my strong players at? Is there anything interesting with the kick? How far ahead are we reading with the kick? Hmm. Okay, seems bad. Uh, black doesn't do it. If black did do the kick, and white responds very, very low lightly, we do have to be careful because not all of our variations are good ones. One thing you can't get into right now is lighter variations because they're all working nicely for white. So this is probably going to not be played. You could do something like this, for example, and try and do that. But with the light stones already on the board, white's probably just going to continue playing lightly, and you've given yourself a bad shape. White's still playing in the style that he's been playing on the entire game, so it fits nicely. So I can see that. If we pincer, on the other hand, we're kind of trying to... And, of course, you know, it goes without saying that if we are, like, herp dirt play elsewhere, then that is extremely good, you know, shape for white. Similar if we just, you know, extended here, same thing. This is pretty much the best result in the history of ever. So we don't want to give this to white either. So what black is trying to do with his stone is he's trying to keep white here in maybe concentrate him a bit so we can poke at some shape because there's a lot of light moves and shape moves it seems that are at white's disposal 
So we can see the idea behind this. We can get it, we can get it. Don't tell me I'm not muted. Okay, good. So yeah, we can see what's uh, going on here. Though I will point out that most of the time, whenever you do play this, yeah, being kicked is something that you should be expecting. If you don't like the kick for whatever reason, then you probably should have played above and try to get your opponent to just take third line territory while you either get the influence or, you know, something else on the board. Okay, so here is where my wire keeps poking the frack out of my microphone. Let's see if I can rearrange things a bit. You lift up. There we go. All right. So white responds with similar move. He's trying to play lightly, inviting black to cut and make complication. Inviting black to cut and make complication, rather. Black says, your corner is mine. White says, oh, no, it is not. And then we have something very, very unusual here. Why do I find this move unusual? Why are we all probably looking at this board and kind of scratching our heads now? White has h3. As the badger has just mentioned, black space can be taken away and seems to be inviting it. Seems completely comfortable with the idea of, I guess, the equivalent of, you know, just dousing himself in blood and throwing himself into a shark's tank. Because Iesidol is not going to be like, hmm, a weak group, I wonder if I should attack it. Of course he's going to attack it. He's least at all. He's going to try to devise a strategy to completely crush the fact that you left a weak group dangling in front of his face. So what is white going to do? And more importantly, what lessons can we take from this when our opponents decide to dangle weak groups in front of our face? Because they do it every game. They're kind of crazy like that. So all right. As the badger has said, white still has h3. And this Siddle immediately takes it for, or no, sorry, Ghoulie immediately takes him for himself. I'm sorry, I got completely confused as to who was who. My bad. Either way, it still stands. They're both aggressive players. I just misspoke their names. So, all right. Ghoulie throws in. Lisa is completely confident that this is not going to amount to anything because he's an aggressive player. He's used to fighting. So, all right. Tanuki. Ooh, wow. That would take some serious guts and uh, a resignation or two. But interesting idea. Interesting idea. Uh, unfortunately, no. We are going to respond here because if we don't, all of our stones may wind up getting killed. So, all right. White responds. It's like, all right, now what are you going to do? Ah, I still don't like where my cord is. We are not a fan of this. Tell you what, I'm moving things. Loud mute noises coming in. Sorry. I was not better set up. All right, so white responds. Black turns, and White Hane again. Now we're getting into some interesting reads. I mean, what what do we do here as Black? I mean, we were this is probably wasn't the plan, right? We were gonna play here. He was gonna play here. We were gonna do something along the lines of this. He was gonna do something along the lines of this. Maybe we protect, and then we're both getting shape, and we get to attack each other. I guess now. So. Okay, that didn't happen. So how do we salvage this? I just want to stop playing now. I mean, do we cut? And if so, where? Cut off J2 and take the right. That seems like a valid strategy. Does everyone agree with 
Delayan's plan. Is that our best option? I would agree if black didn't play d2, c3. Mm. Well, his plan is now going to be listened to. Because when white connects, black is going to connect as well. He's not going to sacrifice. No, 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 no. He is not that type of player where he's just going to back off and live and let live. No, 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 no. He's not going to do that. He's Guli. He's going to keep it. Neither Guli or Lee Siddle are going to invite that variation. Yes, he's Lee Siddle. Thank you. And I tried to save myself by completely changing that, but oh well. I'm going to go back to using colors. Okay. Black's not going to allow that to happen. There we go. Whoever that is. So instead, they each get to save everything. And this is a much more aggressive uh, idea than simply saying, I'm going to take the right hand side. Congratulations on 2D, Norwayzy. I see your. I see your constant studying is paying off. But yes, now that everyone has weak groups, black says, I'm going to capture you. And white says, I don't think so. Black threatens to not really escape. There's really no plan for escape here. Because there's no way that white's going to push through here. Right? That'd be a little, a little suicidal. So instead, White's going to threaten a surround. And by surrounding, we're threatening the bottom to die. So we know he's going to go back and respond to that, which means we can go back here and kill off the stones. So, all right, everyone is being forced to live. Hello, Magrig. Got some shape on the bottom of the board now. Keeping everything separated. That's good. That's good. We still have uh, that weak group on the left. That has to live now. Ooh, but by living, it's putting pressure on our stone. That's uh, that's an issue. And we don't want it to connect. That's another issue. So Black tries to get Sensei with the Hane, but White ain't having that. And he decides to ensure that that little one stone can never get an extension. Okay, okay. We are slowly seeing the plan revealed here. But for the most part, everything has went all peaceful again, right? I mean, we can see these stones are dead. We can see that these stones are now nicely alive. For now, anyway. There's a little bit of logic there, but for now, everything's alive. Left hand group's doing okay. We could run this group out now as black, but then that's the only weak group on the board. And there's still a lot of open space left. So, black does something fun. But out of curiosity, what would you, ooh, look at that, FC says R12, because he's not thinking like a crazy person. All right, FC, I like your idea, but let's imagine that you're, you've been infected with a case of rabies. Any idea where you'd play next? Because a simple invasion seems kind of sane. Hmm. Not quite, not quite. R10, you're getting close. You are so getting close, Chachi. Actually, it's this attachment. I mean, yes, we could simply invade, 
we can see what happens when we do. So I can go this way, or I can go that way. That makes sense. This seems nice, simple, calm. Everybody's going to get shape. Nothing's going to die. Everyone gets to be happy. This says I don't want you to be happy. This says we're going to keep fighting, because we can. Uh, does anyone know, out of curiosity, what black usually gets in this variation, though? Because we sometimes see it. I'll be surprised if it's... Okay, okay. 7Q and 2Q both say influence. Good. You guys have seen this variation before. Awesome. I'm going to show you uh, the same thing, only in two different ways. Um, this is what happens in the game. Right? And you might be saying to yourself, huh, this, this looks familiar. What, where have I... Where have I seen this before? And I think FC probably knows. Okay. A few people know. A few people know. We also see it sometimes um, here. I did it, did it, did Under similar variation. Right? Where white again gets influence and black keeps the corner. So similar idea. If we're attaching here, we're seeking the uh, essentially the same uh, variation. It's all right. White kills off stone. He got some some influence, which is good. Which is good. If we ever want to run this stone out, we need the influence, right? Because we need somewhere to run to. So it makes sense. We've given ourselves a way to save the stone later. Unless, of course, we go back now and make ourselves another weak group. Because this is becoming dangerous. I, I can't count very high, but I can count to three. And three is a very, very interesting number because it's one more than two. I know I'm completely blowing your minds here, but there's a reason why I say this. Two weak groups, usually bad. Anything higher than that, eh usually worse. But alright. White says, I'm going to make myself stronger then. Have my corner. I spy two groups on the board. And Black's just like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll live here. That's, if, it's all, if it's good with you, I mean, I'll, I'll do that. I don't, I don't mind. I, I'll just go back and live. Okay, okay, okay. So here we are living, in the corner, and white moves to attack. Now immediately, I both love and am frightened by white's idea. I love the fact that he's calmly saying, okay, I see the weak groups, I'm going to make myself stronger so I can attack them. But at the same time, in the back of your mind, you kind of get that little nervous feeling when you play this way, because it's like, I'm, I'm also giving away all my territory. If this doesn't work, I'm screwed. So you have to really be confident in what you're doing, otherwise... <laughs> so all right. We've played all these stones. Surely this is going to die now, right? That little stone? I mean, we built a wall, we're leaning on it. Stone's dead, yeah? This is this is ours. Is shoulder hit here better than cab at F eleven? Ooh dear, F eleven? Ew. Okay, F eleven okay, I think you mean E eleven. E eleven says, you know what, you're probably gonna live. 
So here's what I want you to do. Check it out. All I want you to do is give me a huge wall so I can hopefully maybe kill off 011 and if that doesn't happen I'm just going to I'm just going to leave the game if that's okay with you. Like that that's the plan that I have going right now. Because this is really really easy to hook up with, right? Or E11 is going to be horribly, you know, disfigured in this attack. So the only idea here I can see is just back the frack off as fast as possible. Let it connect up and just be like Operation YOLO and try to attack that center. So if we shoulder hit, we're putting a lot more pressure on this. If it wants to run, it has to run to the wall that we just created. So we're kind of telling it where it can go and we made ourselves a lot stronger there before we told it where to go. So if it's going to die, it's going to be this way. Good question though, great question. Black says, okay, that, that's a lot of strength there. I like that you're trying to attack it, but if you don't mind, I'm just gonna jump out if it's cool with you. And now he's daring White to just kill off one stone. So here's what you're going to do, White. Check it out. It's, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. You're either going to keep making me run and get so stronger here that I'm just going to turn around and smash your F-17 wall, or you're just going to take one stone on the third line after making that lovely little wall of yours and softly cry yourself to sleep. Those are your two options. You get to pick which one gets to be most palatable. So White White goes for the softly crying himself to sleep variation. Oh, and that just probably deafened everybody who has headphones. Sorry. So alright. We're attaching to the stone. Hope we can kill it. Awesome. But Black's not done screwing with White. So he tries... So he tries to force even less here for his opponent. White attaches. Black comes in which is crazy brave. I would have been like, you know what? I got him to sacrifice it. I'll do there later. Time to leave. He's like, you know, I don't think he suffered enough. I'm sure I can reduce more of this. I mean, I've got plenty of shape here, right? No. And now there's a cut point. So, okay. This just became a thing. He's really going all in on the idea that there's a lot of Anji here. I mean, this is a game-ending mistake if he's wrong, right? So, okay, he's, I guess, gonna live here. seen this before in a book I wrote, at least it all could be. If that's actually true, that's cool. So, alright, keep separated. Oh, really? Huh. Okay. So, black comes out. White says, what about the corner? Black responds. Plays the honey because there's cuts involved now. Black has no choice but to Atari himself for the freedom. And Atari himself to freedom. And semi-Atari himself to freedom. It's like, okay, we got that now. Threatened to cut. Cut's good. Cut's good. I 
Ah, uh, what happens here? White cuts back. So now we're in a right old mess here. Black plays the Atari, but white connects, forcing black to take. And last but not least, get some shape for himself. Not a bad variation, all things considered. I mean, if we see where black has eyes, we don't see them at all because they don't exist. And we can see the beginnings of shape for black. So, all right. That seemed to go pretty well. That seemed to go pretty well. But white has to be careful because with this next Atari, then we're seeing something rather fascinating uh, occur on the board. We're seeing like a wall here, a wall here, a weak group in the middle, and this soon to push out, not to mention, you know, forcing moves. So, okay. Okay, that makes sense. Looks like white's still in a fair bit of trouble. So white extends. Black plays the Omo Semi Atari, where if he Hanes, he gets really, really good results. Threatens to connect up. So by creating three weak groups, black now created two weakish groups for white. Um, I'd say one. I don't think F... Well, I guess it was kind of in trouble, but we can see with this last move that white's not really in danger, right? I mean, he had to play it, unfortunately, but not really, not really in danger so much. Response again. Black extends down, going for his profit in the center, frack the corner. Great move ensures that the corner for black is no longer a thing. Though well, it could be a thing, I suppose. Could be, could be, could be. Let's see, black plays Atari, white takes. Black plays the Hane, and now we see him profiting in the center. Okay, so we had to give up a few things, but as long as we're flexible, it looks like things are working out for, uh, for black. White throws in to ensure death. Black says, I'm not dead yet. White says, yes, you are. Black doesn't try to link up. He's just sacrificing again. And this is where things get complicated again. Because white decided to save his stones. Black plays a Hane. Now he can connect up his stones underneath the G19 uh, if white's not careful. But white's too busy going for the center again. I'm trying to save his stones. Black says, no, your stones are mine. Kindly let them die, sir. And now things get complicated again. Because with a cross cut, or with a, uh, sorry, with the Hane comes a cutting point. The cutting point comes a cut. So what do we do with cuts? Apparently we find something else to cut. So I'm not gonna lie that this game is easy to follow. I'm not going to say that, but I did pick it because they're two of my favorite players, and I think some of the fighting in this game is really, really nice. Because we're kind of seeing uh, right now these back and forth trades that are going on. So all right, we have the hunt. We have uh, the cut there. Black backs off. Definitely not going to let that die either. Gets to connect, a very, very important move. Strengthen his stones a bit first before connecting on up. Which forces white... Oh, miss click. Forces white to Atari. And then cut. 
Rest in peace, Mr. Tree. You lived for 117 moves. Better than some games that I have done. So, alright, we have a Seki there. As long as we cut, anyway. Otherwise, we're just kind of dead. Uh, not a personal record there, Norwazy. I have gotten through entire games before, believe it or not, where I did not mess up the tree. This is not one of them. Yep, last week I did. Well, remember their FC? Have you ever killed the tree in the first four moves before? I, I want to say no. I really, really want to say no. Um, but yeah, probably. Alright, so what do we have here? White did that. Okay, so what is black going to do now? Um... Ah, right. He saves his stones, connects everything up, profits for himself. Awesome. But since he's taking all that profit for himself, white's like, you don't get the corner then. And if you are not careful, I will cut you and be horrible to you. Can't let that happen, so we take off the stone. And white immediately goes into the corner. Black blocks, and we get a regular uh, Jiseki here. Pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. Nowhere to cut, so might as well play this way. We get to keep Sente. Forcing moves, gotta love them too. Can't ignore, otherwise our Seki's gone. Yeah, Black is getting a lot in the middle. I mean, he had to trade this corner for it, but you can see here that he's actually quite well off in terms of development. Amazingly enough, this little uh, rabid play of his on the right-hand side to get influence because maybe it's going to come in handy later when we start running out into the middle was freaking dead on, right? Without this exchange right now, this board looks completely different. We're going to have like a white stone here instead of black stones, and he doesn't profit anywhere near as much. Indeed, we'd have like a completely different board where these stones would suddenly be in trouble because uh, there's a cut there, so we'd have to probably go back and defend it, or we'd be in some serious trouble. So this little play here, rather than invading it normally, like uh, sane people wanted to do, attached to it to ensure we got influence, because he's a visionary down the road, it will be useful. And sure enough, it was. Indeed. It's mad genius, man. So, alright. He's like, I'm gonna just keep profiting now. Taking my little landing strip of territory across the middle of the board. Which is also why I completely respect his decision to retire. I mean, when better than when you know you're still at the top of your game? It's a pretty good, it's a pretty good time. But alright, tough game for White now. He, he got a lot. He got a lot. Okay, do we have potential as White? No. No potential as White at all. How do people get worse at Go as they get older? Um, well, when they're young, they don't have very many responsibilities, for example. Uh, so they suddenly might have less time to play, especially if they're suddenly, suddenly, you know, getting uh, family, all that good stuff. They might have less time to play. Um, there's a lot of reasons, actually. Lack of stamina for long games could also be a factor, yeah. 
Okay, granted, losing your marbles could be one too, but... All right, so white says, I'm gonna go here. We're gonna begin lightly reducing you with forcing moves. You have to respond to this move. To which black says, no, I don't. You have to respond to my moves. Uh, which white can only say, yeah, you're right, I really do, and responds to his moves. And then we do that. Which is always a cool thing that I like doing. It's like, this is obviously sente. But is there a move that is more sente than his sente move first? Ah, yes, there is one. I like finding those little moves. I think it's so cool. Just to kind of... It's it's not... It's not always because it's a good idea. I just like screwing with my opponent. Thinking that they knew I was going to respond. And then I don't. And they have to respond to me. It's a nice little power play. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Got responded to eventually. It's like, all right, I'm going to force you to kill off these three stones so I can connect all my stones up. So says White. But wait, you are playing Ysedo. He doesn't like doing what you want him to do. Instead, he says, oh, look, lunchtime. I'm going to cut that stone off as well. Well, that did not go at all like we planned. So white backs off. I'm like, okay, I'm going to continue cutting you off then, if you don't mind. It's like, no, no, I am going to connect up these stones or die trying. And black says, wait, did you just say or die trying? I accept that offer, good sir. And he continues trying to separate. Because as we're doing this, what do you notice? Not UFC. About the bottom. FC already knows. Indeed. Delayan has said it. It is dying. Matt says M2 makes the whole H3 area just one I. IA says... I-A? Is that an I or an L? Are you internal affairs? Oh god. We have a narc among us. But yes, he says that that is already in trouble. Chachi is pointing out flower shapes. But yeah, white responds. Black separates. You better live somehow. White says, okay, I'll make another I shape here. But Black is... Black is just awesome at fighting. He's not going to keep responding any longer than he has to. It's like, okay, you responded to me here when there's a cutting point and you haven't connected yet. So what's up with that? And he's like, oh, well, I, I guess I'm going to try to connect there too, I guess. It's like, well, if you're trying to connect there, what about your middle group? It's like, oh, I, I guess I'm in trouble now because I have to connect or I'm dead. So white turns to connect up the middle stuff, which means black extends to ensure that that has to be captured, and then pokes out the eye. Pokey, pokey, pokey means white is dead. That's really, really difficult to do to Guli. But the fighting here just completely went into Black's favor. It was amazing. I mean, even the exchanges in the center that he used here just kept influencing everything over and over again. This little exchange right there was so important in this game. He just completely made it work.
So yeah, White obviously resigns. Hmm. Do we really have 20 minutes left? Oh my god, I can do the other game too. Where was the other game? Where's the other game? Where's the other game? Where's the other game? I want to do the other game. The other game was cool. It's like watching children fighting alligators. It's it's it was amazing. Not that I endorse throwing children to alligators, okay? Um, I'm just saying that. You know what? Never mind what I'm saying. I'm, I'm. Never mind any of that. Do I want to do that game? No, I don't think it's Gobadix's game. What game is it? Is ooh, is, is it this game? Sorry, I closed it because I didn't think I had time to do it today. Okay, yeah, it's this one. It's this one. It's this one. Okay. What? Login required? No. I have it on my computer, don't I? Da -na 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 -na. Alright, so there's like no time to open up a new game. We're just like gonna continue on. No, we will. We will. We will. I'm gonna close this, open up a new game real quick. You can join me for that one. So you close this. Save that. Alright, next game, next game, next game. Let's do a demonstration. Load that one up. And go back into that. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Now let's quickly get the names of these players here. Uh, Chinese game. Alright, so white is someone no one's ever heard of before. And black is someone people probably have heard of before. I'm glad I narrowed it down. Uh, let's see, white is a professional 9-don, and black is a professional 4-don. Awesome. <sighs> Someone doesn't know of my channel. Someone doesn't know of my channel, that's heresy. How could there be any Go players unaware of my channel? Fair warning though, I do upload other things besides Go things there. So, yeah. If you do subscribe, keep in mind there's other videos that I upload there. Because I just like uploading videos of a whole lot, a lot of different things. I mean, it's essentially a um, variety channel, for lack of a better word. And I like that aspect. I really like that aspect because it introduces some of the people who subscribe for my video game stuff and they get introduced to Go, and the other way around, so it's cool. I've had a lot of people saying, you know, I, I'm not really into strategy or mind games, but I checked out some of your Go videos, and now me or my girlfriend, or me and my boyfriend, or whatever, are now teaching each other how to play Go. So it's cool. I like that a lot. Which is why I'm never changing that ever. But all right, fun stuff and fun game. So we have, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this game is brutal. I saw this, and I liked the game. It's probably gonna be in one of my picks, simply because I like brutality in Go. I love it when, um, yeah, I, I really like one-sided games occasionally because it's a great way to see what went wrong on a fundamental level. And I'm always looking to improve my fundamentals in the game or to reinforce the fundamentals of my game. So when I see like a really, really one-sided battle, it's like, okay, what can I learn from this game that's what just fundamentally went wrong? So let's see if we can find that out in this game. All right, we got that there. Got that there, pretty straightforward, Jiseki. Black approaches. White goes high, and then black goes insane and approaches again like it's a freaking handicap game. Which you would of course imagine. I'm playing a nine... Wait a minute. I got this wrong. I got this wrong, I got this wrong, I got this wrong. I got this wrong, I got this wrong, I got this completely, completely wrong. Sorry, sorry. 
That makes more sense now. My bad. White is actually no. I did get that. I'm sorry. My brain, my brain could completely collapsed. I was right, kind of, only not really. Oh man, this this is getting edited out. You can bet your you can you can be sure all this is getting edited out. Good thing about my editing procedures now is no one's gonna know that I did this. I had the ranks right. I had the names wrong. All right. This time with less derp. No, it doesn't count like... No, the tree is still alive, okay? The tree is fine. So, there we go. Alright. I thought everything was going well. So, black approaches, white backs off high, and then black apparently says to himself, I'm giving handicap to this nerd, let's go kill him. So, already you know that this is going to be an interesting game. So all right, white pincers, and black jumps on out. As you would normally expect, black's complete textbook is like, well, I guess I'm going to jump out too. Black goes down, puts pressure to get stronger. Keeps getting sh now. This is a weird, the weirdest freaking shape you're gonna see in a game for a, probably the rest of the week. Is this like, how are you using this? Black's just gonna take the corner for himself, all in sente. Otherwise, he connects, right? So black, so white says, you know what? No more sente for you. But he's strong now, right? So he gets to ignore an attack. So let's review that again for the moment. Black went handicap style. And then was just completely eager to just live in the corner. But he couldn't quite do it completely in Sente. And because he couldn't, and because White has clearly played moves to give him shape and out and cool things like that, he gets to counterattack. White says, fine, you can cut through there, and I will surround you. And then Black White says, ah, then I'm not going to cut through there, am I? Which forces Black to connect. Keep separation, threatens a Hane, forces White to consider, Black to consider a Ko, which he doesn't do. He's just going to go capture a stone and further kill off White uh, Black's shape forcing him to get out of there via the large, the small knight. Okay, he's leaving. So, black takes, or white takes some territory for himself. Everything looks kind of sta uh, okay at the moment. We need some more shape for black, but not too bad, not too bad. And we see the shape there. All right. Looks like the game is gonna normalize. And from here on out, everything is going to be great, right? Your standard, normal game, pretty even. Mm-hmm. That's what we're expecting. Nice, even game. So white approaches, black backs off, because apparently he's done, you know, being overly aggressive. White backs off and gets a framework. Now he's got enclosure and framework. Black's like, I'm going to take my territory. And this is really weird. What really struck me about this game when I was reviewing it is this kind of odd style that I see sometimes. I saw real super aggression here. Just try to reduce as much as possible. We'll get shape in the middle and will steal your corner, and then after that, after we've done our damage, we're going to play the rest of the game as solidly as possible. It's like, we did our damage early on, and let's just make sure that he can't do anything to us afterwards, because hopefully the damage we did will be severe enough that we'll be able to eke out a win. I mean, that's, that's kind of what it reminded me of. 
Uh, White, on the other hand, is a professional nine down. And they're, they kind of don't let games go like that. They just find the weakest thing on the board and drive spikes through its eyes. So, okay, the weakest thing on the board right now is a left-hand group. So I see your shape. Let's start driving spikes through your eyes. What are you going to do? Are you going to go deeper? Because if you're going deeper, you've got a small knight, and I'm going to threaten the frack out of that thing. So what are you going to do? Black says, I'm going to lean on this. That way I can strengthen myself. White says, okay, I'm going to strengthen myself and try and take half the board. Now we're running into a problem. Now we are definitely running into a problem. Black tries to reduce because he can't let white have all of that. That's just way too much, right? This is an insane amount of everything. So, all right, we go in. Wouldn't M16 be enough? We're gonna get there, Yannick. We are gonna get there, no worries. White plays Hane. This is good, I agree with this, I agree with this move. Because what we've seen now is um, how much Aji is left behind. We can see that there's like Hane and cross cuts and clamps and things like that. White didn't just back off and say, you know what, okay, you can live. So we see where the Aji is. So if we're thinking about reducing the top, good thing to do, play that first move just as a probe. See what's there. That, that's really good. That's really good. We can see that this, well, this guy's a pro. Um, then you play something blazingly obvious. It's like, I'm going to cut through your small knight, or I'm going to reduce you. And that seems like something that I'd play. I mean, I'm not the most subtle of Go players. I can find that move. Which immediately makes me worry when I see them play it in the game that I'm uh, going over. So, okay. White responds saying, you want to cut me? Cut me! Go for it! Have at it! Because if you cut me, that's going to be funny. And the reason why it's going to be funny is because this, gr this group is weak, and then this group is weak. Whereas, for white, only this one's going to be weak. So sure, cut me! Have at it! Don't care, you're going to die if you do it. And this is where my feeling was validated. It's like, all right, that was going to be my move because it's not good. Cool. I feel better now. So white goes back and cuts. White plays the Atari. And now we're kind of just going back into maybe we can live up here mode. White says, all right, unlike the idiot reviewing this game, I actually can play a co. So sure, have at it. So, all right, we're going to play a co threat because I know how to find them. Interesting move here by Black. Apparently he has no intention of fighting this co. So he creates some extra, or he uh, plays a time suji, I think. And then decides to frack the co. Just, who cares about it? We're just going to keep trying to live here. That's what we were doing. So, okay. Black plays. We created some extra Aji. Forcing uh, white to take. Okay. Black backs off, or white backs off. And then we answer the co. Threat, originally. Has to take. We get to go into threat and some eyes. White has to throw in or he's not going to be very happy when his group lives, which let's, which I th would think would, you know, let the Kobe retaken, but Black threatens this first. Which is interesting. 
doesn't directly threaten the coast. So what he's asking for is an exchange, which White takes him up on. He's like, okay, I'll kill the top, and you can drop down because there's still Aji there. Okay, that's a little unusual, but I... a peaceful result, to be sure. Definitely a peaceful result. Black probes. Probe, probe, probe. Probe, probe, probe. Cuts. No co, thank you very much. Definitely sente. Otherwise, you know, bad things happening to white. And then he gets to drop down. Those stones are certainly dead. Okay. Like I said, a bit of a peaceful result there. Unexpectedly peaceful. But I do like that too, when a very, very complicated game turns into a nice, peaceful game. Because we all make those kind of uh, those mistakes, right? We were going to try and play solidly in our game, and then suddenly some weird crap breaks out. And then the question is, how do I get control of this game again? So those are really good uh, games to go over as well. Like, how does that actually return to not being this cluster f um, stuff? So, all right, white jumps out. Black takes corner, because 3-3 three, is threatened. White takes that probing stone. I thought that too. Thank you very much, FC. White takes a probing stone. And Black decides to make a really, really cool decision here. He decides, understandably so, that there's Aji here. There's a threat to hook up. These stones aren't off the board, so there's Aji there as well. So he decides to see what's there. Okay, okay. Oh, not you. Really? One second. Oh, I hate those people on Twitch. Not the people who are actually watching on Twitch right now. I mean, the spammers. I hope no one actually does what that guy suggested. You don't want to do it. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so yeah. White tries to ensure that's never going to link. Black connects. Uh, sorry, Magrig. And then caps the stone. Make sure that's not gonna go anywhere. Black says that's fine. I can use this to my advantage. I'll get a very large area on the right while white is worrying about all of that wonderful Aju that's still there in his position. Completely understandable. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, unfortunately, White's just like, I'm just going to live here if that's cool with you. I mean, I there, there's Sente here. There's Aji, sure, but I, I'm just going to live and reduce you. Are, are we good with that? Are we good? Is that okay? So, huge area here. Not letting his opponent get it, clearly. Okay, that's the end of the tree. How did far did we get this time? 81. Oh my god, we're going. we're getting worse at this. We're getting so much worse at this. We made it way over the hundreds last time. Uh, but okay, black applies pressure. White's just like, I'm going to settle here then. Now there's a cutting point you to worry about. Protecting all of his shapes. So now it's black's turn to prove that there was actually Aji on top of the board, right? And this is where it just gets beautiful. Because this is the kind of thing we're all going to lose. Okay, not all of us. Some of us actually can do life and death. The rest, of, the rest of us who can't are probably letting this group live, like, at least half the time. So, alright. First we cut it off. Cut 
connects up. Have to have to get rid of the mines. Throwing in. Okay, seems like it's everything's dead so far. Activating cut points. White protects. No cutting today. No cutting today. White protects. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Threaten to cut through because it doesn't look like black can uh, live just yet. Don't connect because that's what will get us killed, right? We have to drop down. We can't do this. Otherwise, um, game over. Actually, if you really want to go with maximum trolling, you just take. Just be like, ha ha. Because that would be the way to make me sad. If you don't just Atari it, you just take the co back again. Not only flaunt the thing in my face that I can never win, but use it to win the game. That wouldn't be nice. It's alright. He's now getting uh, some shape for himself. I have to be careful. I have to make sure that doesn't actually become an eye, so we falsify it. Black extends out. White cuts. Black uses Samaji here. Very, very nice. I like, I like. I like the attempt, rather. Turns. Before going back and playing the Atari. Black plays nice and strong, says black, you're not, or white plays nice and strong, says black, you're not gonna go anywhere. Black connects, forcing white to defend his shape. Cuts, takes. Connects. White says you're not going anywhere. Plays the Atari. Connects again. Not going anywhere. Tries to cut off the shape. But that's an Atari. Forcing uh, Black to take. And then he just defends himself. At that point, it looks like there was a lot of Aji there for White. But there just wasn't or against white, sorry. But there just wasn't enough to use against him. And black can't quite squeak out a life. He was close. He was close. He got himself an eye. We can see how one mistake would have led to two. So I, I see why, you know, he went through that route. But no, not, not enough. Not enough. And thus black resigns the game by dying massively in an invasion that did not work. So yeah, short, quick game. Killing off one of those invasions that against a lot of us, we'd make a mistake and we'd win. And we'd lose, rather. We would have maybe responded too quickly and I don't know. Maybe we'd accidentally play, I don't know, just anything else. Maybe Atari from the wrong side, or maybe we would just play the Hane here out of force of habit. So yeah, kind of an interesting game there. Anyway, I hope you like these two games. As people have already mentioned, uh, since people have like given out my links, if you are not aware of my Twitter where I announce when I stream, you can do so there. If you do not or are not currently aware of my YouTube account, you can find it there as well. It's where I upload pretty much any video I decide to make. A lot of Go videos. I actually have, and this is kind of cute because I counted it origin uh, the other day, I actually have over 160 of them. Uh, various lectures and um, my games reviewed against various uh, mid-level dons, I guess. So quite a lot, quite a bit of Go content on that channel as well. But we will resume this week after next for another Go lecture.